um, what would that mean to you, if you like? What, what, what sort of length are you looking for? Um, it's sort of extended length, and you want to extend length, but it will not be a length. Okay, yeah. Well, I mean, I can give you a, I can give you a, 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 a I think it's a good way of doing it. Oh, yes, so you, you come up here and stand up. I've got you standing here. So, so if you, you come and come in here and stick it in my face. Well, you're very lucky. I'm just about to be interviewed by uh, Radio 4, so um, you can hear about Colossus. All right? Okay, go for it. Right. So this is the rebuild of a Colossus Mark II computer. We started in this room in actually 1994 with a heap of steel on the floor, hot of grey paint, an electric drill, taking us nearly 16 years because we've done it from eight black and white photographs taken in 1935 and 10 fragments of circuit diagram. So it's been reverse engineering squared and very difficult indeed, piecing all together. And the reason why it was so difficult was because Colossus was kept secret after the war until the mid-70s. Now, what um, uh, Colossus is doing is it's, uh, it's reading uh, an intercepted ciphertext and it's trying to find the real positions used to encipher that text so that it can then be slightly deciphered. So Colossus is analyzing the ciphertext coming off of the paper tape there and that's in the Boda or Murray teleprinter code and being read at 5,000 characters a second. That's the data going into Colossus. Now, Colossus has got no memory. It reads the data over and over again and then analyzes it using 2,500 valve tubes and all these switch circuits in order to analyze and find the real setting. Because that was a crucial thing. You had to find those settings before you could be started in that and that could take anything up to six hours on a Mark II philosophy in World War II, going over and over and over the site of text and analyzing it to get the real settings out. And so that was what philosophy was doing, and it was very good at this, indeed. Um, uh, over 50% of the messages intercepted were broken uh, uh, by, by philosophy. And it was a very important contribution to shortening the war. Now, the reason why philosophers was kept so secret was that um, during the war, we told the Russians we could break the Nidna. We never told the Russians we could break the RS. And with the Cold War coming up, we didn't want them to find out the truth. And that's why everything was kept so secret in Vector Park. That was the big secret. And, um, uh, and so the machines at the end of the war were dismantled. Um, although two machines did escape, and they went to get diesel to in Cheltenham, they were assembled there, and they ran there until 1961, all through the Cold War. So that was, they made a dismantle, and then everything was kept secret. So when I started the project in, uh, in 1993, um, I say that the whole thing had been kept secret for years and years and years, and the only information available was very, very meagre about the photographs and the memories of some of the engineers who worked on it. Now, Tommy Flowers, who designed Colossus, is still alive. He died in 98. So I overlapped him by about seven years. And so I was able to meet with him and talk with him. But of course, it was a long time ago, and many projects ago. So although he gave me information about uh, how things might have been put together, um, I still had to work it all out for myself. And of course, the, the range to operate the Colossus, there, there was normally a church in a free range and a trade breaker operating Colossus. And the Wrens had operated Colossus. As soon as they heard I was rebuilding it, they came round to check I was doing it right. Mm -hmm. And so they were here uh, regularly looking at it to see whether I got it right and it was doing it correctly. But the other really amusing thing was that um, Colossus generates an enormous amount of heat. It's got two and a half thousand valves, and all those have to be heated up. And so it takes eight and a half kilowatts of power. So this room gets very warm indeed. So when I started this project, before that, I'd been working on mainframe computers that had air conditioned rooms and so on. So I asked the friends, how did you keep Colossus cool in the winter? Open the windows, stupid, just natural convection cooling, and that was the cooling for Colossus. So it has been a very long and difficult project to get it working, but it was just so important to do it as a tribute to the people who worked here and the engineers who designed it. Um, so here it is, the rebuilt Colossus of the Star. Who is this 
Oh, uh, a, a, a very, very bright person. Um, and, uh, and we obviously had, he had um, thought out very carefully how he was going to design this machine in order to get the, uh, uh, the, the results that he wanted. And that's also very interesting.